one more week. I'm filming this on Thursday, and there's one more week till we get actual NFL football, and I just, I literally can't wait. It's been the longest summer ever. I've watched too much baseball. I need football back in my life. Anyway, I'm your host, Megan Townsley, and welcome to another episode of Downtown Sports. Today, I'm going to be reviewing, ranking, and previewing the top five rookie wide receivers from last season and talking about some of their impressive and maybe not so impressive stats. So let's get started. So without further ado, I'm going to start with the fifth ranked guy from last year, work my up to number one, Christian Watson. He was ranked fifth of the rookies last season. I mean, for him being thrown into the situation that he was with Mr. Aaron Rodgers, who just immediately had beef with him, I'm still very impressed with what Christian Watson was able to do. Now, last season on paper, Watson had 611 yards. He was targeted 66 times and had 41 receptions. Now, this is the number I want you to remember. He had seven touchdowns. So even though all those numbers I just said, they're way lower than the rest of the receivers the other ones at least broke the 800 yard threshold but Watson only played 14 out of the 17 games last season and he also had grumpy Aaron Rodgers throwing to him so he didn't really want to give him the ball I think all of these stats are really just a baseline for Christian Watson and it doesn't even show his potential really not to mention that this guy is fast <laughs> like I'm fast he ran a two or four two eight at the combine and he also stands at six four six five depending on which website you look at but nonetheless he's definitely a strong tall giant receiving target and so i just think when you put him and love together he's going to explode and pop off this upcoming season his targeted air yards percentage was 21.47 which is a fairly high number and his average yards after catch above expectation was 1.5 now that's the number that really stands out to me the most i think it's a little skewed from he had a 45 yard touchdown i think in week 16 but still nonetheless a lot of the times after he caught the ball he ran it down the field 20 30 yards the red zone was kind of a an area of concern from him or at least lining up in um in the red zone and some of the beat writers and some of the journalists that have reported on him this offseason have said that that has been an area that they have been targeting a lot more he even had him practice a couple days ago two touchdowns in the red zone which was great to see i think that especially when you have jordan love throwing to him and he's going to be his number one guy that we're going to see a higher production Rank number four, we have George Pickens. Now this guy, he's just a menace. He's just a complete menace. I mean, he's out there low key to pick fights, but also he is just great in contested catches. And like, I'm not saying contested catches is just the be all end all for receiver because there's so much more you have to do. But if you want someone to get the ball and you want someone in a tight situation, George Pickens, put him in there. So last season he had 801 yards, 84 targets, and he had four touchdowns. Now, when it comes to targeted air yards, he had 26.8, but his yards after the catch above expectation was negative 0.06. So he was not gaining yards after the catch, at least especially in those contested situations. A lot were on the outside. He went down or went out of bounds, but hey, he still caught the ball, so I'm not knocking him that way. The thing about George Pickens is he really more is a highlight reel. So a lot of his catches, I would say he kind of in my opinion, tried too hard when he didn't really need to. He had this incredible one-hand catch, which I mean, it was beautiful. It was early in the season, but then he tried to recreate it a couple games later and almost got intercepted. So it's more of like, where does his ego come into this? Because it's not necessarily like, it, it, the show is not about you, George Pickens. It's really not. It's about your team. But nonetheless, hey, if he makes the catch, he makes the catch. I just think sometimes he tries too hard to do that. Sometimes he tries to go behind the back and catch the ball when he could have just easily faced front. And a common theme that I'm going to talk about throughout the rest of the video is that the next four receivers, they were not being thrown to by anyone of high caliber in the quarterback position. So George Pickens getting thrown to by Mitch Trubisky to start and then Kenny Pickett which I mean Pickett I think he is a very high ceiling I think he's gonna do better this season but last season I mean maybe that's the reason George Pickens had to go up and do all these crazy acrobatic catches because the ball was not put exactly where he wanted it to but I, I I believe in consistency more than trying to be too flashy um but I mean that's just my opinion on Pickens now, Drake London. Drake London is a curious case because he actually was scouted higher than Garrett Wilson, who was number one on this list, but he only had 866 yards last season and four touchdowns. So it's like, okay, yeah, he was scouted higher, but I mean, maybe he just got handed the, the bad draw with Marcus Mariota. So again, another, another strong young wide receiver who just didn't have anyone throwing him the ball, really. 
Now, the thing that I really like about Drake London, especially from some of the film that I watch, is that he's he's textbook. He really is. He's a bigger dude, which is great, he's able to get the ball in, in tightly contested situations. But if you watch his footwork, it looks like he wrote the book. Like he, his footwork is so, so clean. And what I really, really like about his route running is you don't know where he's gonna go. He's really committed to the bit and say he's running a hitch route, he's gonna act like he's going post or vice versa. And his cuts are so, so sharp. And that's what is, makes him able to get open in space and separate from the secondary. And the other thing is too, is he, even if the first, second or the third reads aren't open, he'll get open. He'll get open. He puts his twinkle toes down on the sideline. So I think skill wise, London is just really, really at baseline. He's textbook. Now next is a guy that I've been so high up on for so long, Chris Olave. I've already talked about him so much, but I have to bring him up again. Ranked second out of the rookie wide receivers last season. And again, another trend of he was just getting thrown to by anyone, literally anyone. Now he had 1,042 yards, 119 targets with 72 receptions, a 53.8 success percentage rate and 69.5 yards per game averaged and four touchdowns. But Alave was also fourth in voting for Offensive Rookie of the Year, and I just can't say enough how impressive it is that he was able to do what he did while being thrown into the wide receiver one spot as a rookie and not really having anyone consistently throwing to him. And also he was injured and didn't play the full amount of the game. So I just think these stats are just like Christian Watson baseline. And I just think he can just go up from here. Now, the difference between Chris Olave and someone like Drake London is he's better in zone coverage and his route running is not sharp. It's not it's not anything special. When you watch his highlights, he's not really doing anything crazy. His targeted air yards percentage of the team last season, 38. So we got 38% of those deep balls thrown to him, which makes sense because, I mean, Michael Thomas didn't want to play football anymore. And he's probably not going to want to play football this season anyway. So you can expect the majority of those yards to go to Chris Olave. But I think the thing that he really needs to improve on if he wants to turn more into one of the higher end receivers receivers, maybe not elite this upcoming season, but his yards after the catch, I mean, his yards after the catch expectation is negative 0.02. So I think if you watch the film, you really see that he just goes down a little bit in like a Tyler Lockett style. Like Lockett just doesn't want to get hit. So he goes down immediately, which I think is hilarious. A lot of more just gets tackled faster. Um, but I think if he was able to kind of like sharpen up some of his cuts or maybe even just take a book from Garrett Wilson and try a spin move or two. I don't know. That that seems more his style. But and now number rank number one uh, is not shocking, but Garrett Wilson. Now on paper last season, Wilson had 1,103 yards. He had 147 targets and 83 receptions, which is the most out of any of the receivers I've discussed. He had a 47.6 success perception rate. And this number is interesting. He only, he only averaged 64.9 receiving yards per game. Now that's a little lower than someone like Chris Olave, but simply in playing, he just really wasn't a deep threat. He only caught four to 23 targets that were for 68 yards. He had a touchdown, but any of his go routes, he really wasn't that successful on. Now the key to Garrett Wilson is really his explosiveness. And that's what allows him to be so successful in the middle of the field. That, and I mean, his ability to gain tons of yards after the catch, his yards after the catch over expectation, 1.1 yards, not as much as, uh, <laughs> my Green Bay boy, Christian Watson, but still very, very good number right there. And I mean, a lot of this is due to the fact that Garrett Wilson literally looks like he's dancing out there on the field. I mean, he throws in spin moves. His routes are so sharp. His cuts are violently sharp. I mean, a lot of the stuff, it really looks like he has his own internal playbook, but doesn't even need to think about it. He just gets the ball and goes and just, will just beat the secondary. It's, it's really beautiful to watch. Like I, I love watching that guy and it makes sense why I was off offensive rookie of the year and definitely pay attention to him this upcoming season. Now, another reason that I wanted to talk about all these five guys is, I mean, because football's here. I mean, it's fantasy football's here. I've already drafted some of my leagues. I got a couple more coming up. And these five guys were definitely some of the guys that I I wanted on my team that and if you play daily fantasy sports such as on DraftKings all of these guys are very very good value plays if you're looking to save some money in your salary cap now all of them are under 7,000 and even some of them under 6,000 Pickens is 5,000 and London he's 5,400 so if you're looking for specifically during matchups too as well a lot of these guys are just they're going to be very good picks for you now let's get into the reason that I started this video and my final rankings for how I think that these guys are going to finish. Now, ranked fifth, I just got to go with George Pickens. I don't really see him improving more than he did last season simply because I just think his ego might get in the way. Number four, I have Drake London. And now this is where I kind of get controversial with myself because I think Drake London is very, very talented. I think he's more talented than who I have at number three, Watson. But 
simply because Atlanta is just not going to be throwing the ball that much. They're definitely going to be one of the run heavy offenses. I just don't see London getting that many targets, probably more than he did last season, but I don't think it's going to grow, go up exponentially. So have London at four. Number three, I have Watson. And this one is plain and simple because of Jordan Love. And I just think that they're going to have a great chemistry. Watson's going to play all 17 games and he's wide receiver one out there. And I think that it's just going to be a really breakout season for him. Number two, I have Chris Olave, same ranking as last season. Again, he's going to be wide receiver number one because Michael Thomas hates football. And number one, I have Garrett Wilson. I just think that the Jets are really going to surprise some people this season. And when you have Aaron Rodgers out there, like you're guaranteed to get some targets. So that's my rankings for this upcoming season. I'm very, very excited. I don't know how many times I've said that, but I'm tired of talking. So we'll see you later.